Secrets Video Podcast, Episode 2. <laughs> it's a little episode we like to call Saving Time with the Links Panel. I'm David Blattner, and I'm here along with my co-host, Anne-Marie Concepcion. Hey, David. How are you? I am well. We have so many exciting things to talk about today, especially how to use the Links Panel in InDesign CS4 to get efficient and productive, save time, go home early. It's going to be great. But first, before we get into that, I just wanted to remind people that this episode is sponsored by our good friends at Adobe who are still, until the end of this month, offering $200 off the upgrade as long as you have uh, InDesign CS1 or CS2 and you want to upgrade to CS4, jumping right, right over CS3, mm -hmm. 200 bucks off. So it's the same price as CS3. And it is worth the upgrade. I just have to tell everyone out there, yes, I know this is sponsored by Adobe and everything, but <laughs> totally apart from that, it's really worth the upgrade. The That's CS4 right. tools are just, it, you'll make up the, the, the cost in no time. That's one of the reasons we're doing the video cast in the first place, is to show people how much time you can save with some of the CS4 features. That's right. So yeah. let's just jump ahead right into InDesign here and mm -hmm. show the links this panel. The random stuff catalog. <laughs> <I love laughs> this that. is the random stuff catalog. You don't need it, <laughs> but you want it. It's true. And one of the things that you do need and you're going to want is the links panel. So I just That's clicked right. on the links panel icon there to open up this links panel. And, and Ray, do you want to talk about a couple of the new things that are, yeah. are show up immediately? Well, by default, you can see that we have uh, like a little skirt at the bottom of the links panel that opens up. And it's called link info. It's initially empty. But if you select one of the links, you'll see a whole lot of detail about that one individual link. I love that. Now, the link info panel can be hidden or shown with the little triangle up here on the left but also if you just double click a link the link info panel will automatically open and close it's great yeah all right um, also did you notice that we have thumbnails here and these thumbnails can be made larger in in the panel options okay but that's very useful when you have no idea like look at the file names for these for these uh, images uh, that would be impossible to tell what's what and uh, we also have linked page numbers on the right so and you can sort by any of these settings. So, David, why don't you show us how the sorting works? Well, you know, up these these column headings at the top, name, and then there's that little uh, icon there for alerts. Uh, that's the status column, and then mm -hmm. the page column. These work just like uh, the Mac OS Finder or Windows Explorer. Uh, you can you can uh, sort by any of these. For example, if I want to sort uh, by reverse page order, I just click on that column header and it reverses it. So I can see the bottom one is PB, that's the something on the pasteboard, and then right. from the last page to the front. Or I can mm -hmm. order this by uh, status. So that's for example, very useful. I, this is very, very useful. Mm -hmm. I typically have these set up as status because I want all of the missing and modified ones to be at the top, or by name and so on. The other cool thing you can do here though is you can reorder these columns. Like I'd like to have the status over on the left, to the left of the name. So I'm going to just drag that whole column over to the left, and now status is over on the left, to the left of mm -hmm. the name. So that's pretty cool too. I think it's interesting to point out also that uh, Adobe decided that if something is completely up to date and is not missing, then you won't see anything in status. Yes. So well, just like in previous versions. Yeah, and it, well, it's, your eye goes immediately to what's wrong in this case. Right. In this case, there is something uh, missing. We'll deal with that a little bit later. But now, the, I, I, I do love the, how the link info panel gives you a ton of information about all these links, but I do find it kind of bothersome to always have to open up that panel yeah, to see yeah, that information. Yeah. So there is yet another way to customize the links panel in CS4 to add whatever information you'd like right to the top part of the links panel. This and you is do huge. that. This is one of the most important things that they added in InDesign CS4. I love this. You go to panel options yeah. in the links panel menu and you'll see that you have two uh, rows of checkboxes, one or two columns of checkboxes. The first one, show column, anything that you turn on here will appear in the top half of the links panel. That's mm -hmm. what they mean by columns. Mm -hmm. And then show and link info is that little skirt area at the bottom. So like one of the things that I'd love to see in the top area of the links panel is the scaling of the images. Right. Right. That's, because be otherwise really it's added. such a pain to figure out what is the scaling of your images. If you add it to the top of the links panel, you can just open up the links panel and see all the scaling amounts at one glance. Also, yep. effective PPI is very useful very to see useful. what the resolution is of something. Yep. 
Oh, you know, one of the things that I really like doing, and let me just grab mm -hmm. this uh, cursor here. I'm going to scroll down here to format. I really like seeing, you know, is it an EPS, is it JPEG, a oh, PSD, right. whatever. That's really handy. And another thing, I'm going to scroll down even more. You can see there's yeah. lots of options in here. You can really customize, right. you know, you know, uh, get the links panel to show you exactly what you want. But one of the things that's a little obscure down here at the bottom is folder. Mm -hmm. We see folder 0, folder 1, and that means what folder is this, uh, this linked file inside. Folder 0 is the folder folder that is enclosing the uh, the file the link file itself folder 1 is the folder that that folder is inside that, that folder is in yeah, right yeah. i mean i think that you could actually select path but that you know some of the paths would be really really long so sometimes you don't need to know the entire path of where an image is all the way out to the server name exactly. or your hard drive name but just knowing the first couple folders that something is in is very useful i think that's really useful yeah. let's go ahead and click okay here and see all, right. all of those columns well we can't see now. all the columns right now because this links panel is just too narrow so tell you what i'm going to do especially because we have this very small screen i'm just right. going to pull we do this have out. a horizontal scroll bar though uh, there is a horizontal scroll bar, but I don't want to scroll back and no, forth all no, the time. Does. I'm just going to make this wider so you can see that the links panel becomes really powerful once you start adding all of these, right. uh, all these items. Let's go ahead and, and stretch these out. I'm just pulling the little vertical bar to the right of the, the column header mm -hmm. uh, to stretch it out. And you can see that we've got status and then the name, page number, and then we right. also have resolution. Very, very handy. This is the Maybe. resolution on right here next to the page number, and then this is the scaling amount. Now, the uh, if we have tool t tooltips running, you'd be reminded of what these little icons stand for. But I think that they're pretty self-explanatory since you see the percentages. Now, like if I scroll down a bit in links, in uh, in the links panel, I'm, what I'm looking for are any um, I'm looking for any of the links that might not be proportionally scaled. So right. I'm dragging this out really wide, and let me. Oh, this is actually one of the down. cool things in uh, in well, the, the ability to open up an InDesign file and see what yes. the images that are inside of it is that was in in the earlier version. But one but of the you couldn't things... see the thumbnails in the earlier versions. Oh, that's true. That was right. very very cool. Unfortunately, we can't see the scaling amounts here. But if we did have an image that was disproportionately scaled, I thought that there was one in this document. Yeah, let's scroll down here and look at the other image at the bottom here. The one, one, uh, the one of that skier down there. There's two images in here. Oh, right. Uh, there's a parent yes. and child. This is new in CS4. When you have the same image that's been placed more than once in a document, it gets grouped together. And then what we call this a parent and child grouping inside the links that's panel. Right. So we can see that this one image, this one, one, two, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. It's actually an image of a snowboarder. Uh, it has been placed on page placed one mm -hmm. at just about 100%, right? Yep. But on yep. page three, it was scaled while somebody was on the phone. And uh, <laughs> it's disproportionately scaled. And you can see that in both the resolution and, and, in, the, uh, and in the scaling column. So it's a really exactly. quick way to do a you – know, I'm sure you could use live preflight, which I'm, I'm sure we're going to be talking about in a future video – uh, video cast to check these things, but I just love having them right there, you know, uh, at a glance. It is see them. great. You know, the other thing that I'm I'm seeing here is the is the um, these are all in the links panel. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, it, these are all in the links folder. Folder mm -hmm. zero is all set to links. But if I come up here, I can see that this file here is in links that's inside temp. Remember, we talked about the folder zero versus folder one. So folder zero for all of these is links. But the folder one, that is the folder that the links folder is inside, is temp. So again, at a glance, we can see that this image is part of a different group. You know, it's in a whole right. different folder structure. I do that. A, I do that a lot when I'm reusing images that I, that were in a different project. I'll pull them in from that links folder, yeah. right? Yep. And so, just having only folder zero show links might give you a false sense of security. So you might as well also show folder one. Uh, yeah, and maybe so. even folder two if you want. So the other thing we should show here is that you can do edit with. Uh, you know, in the previous versions of InDesign, you could do an edit original. So for example, I could grab this JPEG image and I could come out here and say edit original. And it would open in right. Photoshop or, I don't know, some other program. But mm -hmm. in InDesign CS4, they have a new feature called Edit With, which lets me open a, an image in this particular program, just the program I want it to. So in this case, I might want to open it in Photoshop or any other program I, I, uh, I wanted to. So that is, again, very, very handy, I think. But one of the coolest things, can I just jump in and, and just jump right to Relink folder? Because I love this feature. I'm going to click on for Format at the top here, and I'm going to put all of my EPS files at the top. It's in alphabetical order now. I'm going to just grab all those EPS files. 
Uh, why don't we actually go and look at this? They're all on page 9. So I'm going to jump to page 9. And we can see at the bottom of page 9, there are these vector images. They're all EPS files. EPS well, files might be left over from when you used to use a different layout program. Exactly. That could only take EPS files. And maybe Very now you've point. converted everything to Illustrator files, right? Dot .ai. Yep, yep. And I want to I want to replace all of these with the AI files instead. Mm -hmm. So how would I do that? Well, I can go to the link panel menu and choose relink to folder. This is a new CS4 feature, extremely useful because right. in the relink to folder um, uh, dialog box, we have two basic options down here at the bottom: match same file name and extension, or match same file name but a different extension. So these were EPS files, and now we want them to be AI files. Mm -hmm. So just say, hey, these are going to be the same file name, but a different file extension That's at right. the end. This is going to be Now, AI once again, files. it's a faster way to do something that you could do manually in CS3. That's right. You could select every individual image and choose relink and then point it at a different file type. But I love this new feature of being able to completely do them all at once with a different, you know, you know what? Where else this comes in useful is when you have low res and high res images. Yeah. So if yeah, you have yeah, a whole yeah. bunch of images that are saved as JPEGs, and then you also have another folder going on of the high res TIFFs or PSD files, you could relink. But the important thing to remember is to always keep the file names exactly the same. Don't add low res and high res to them. Right. Because otherwise, this this thing will, will fall apart. You know, this reminds me, David, of well, let's go ahead and relink them. Yeah. That, so now they're all going to be uh, AI files. We can see yeah. that they show up in the format. Uh, column as Adobe PDF, but that's just because there's a PDF in the AI file. That's right. But these are now all AI files, as we can see in the, in the, uh, the name. So now very, let's very say handy. that we actually wanted to keep things organized. We want to move these files into our links folder, uh -huh. right, instead of keeping them here in folder zero, which is the new files folder. Yep. You could select all these, and you want to choose copy to folder, but a lot of users say, well, where'd it go? Oh my gosh, they got rid of it. But actually, there are a bunch of commands now hiding in the utilities flyout menu. Good so point. copy links to is the folder that you'd want, and then you could just select this and navigate to your links folder to gather them all together, which is a really good trick for keeping things organized without having to do a package for the printer, which would also do something like that. Yeah, you know, there's one image in there that's missing. I'm just seeing it. That I'm just noticing that up at the top there. Um, why don't we go oh, ahead yeah. and relink that to its original file? So if I, this is a little trick that um, uh, it's only for Mac users. I apologize, Windows users. We'll come up with the Windows only trick. But Dave and I tried our best to figure out if you could do this in Windows, but I don't think you can. And I believe it's a leopard only trick as well. If you have something missing and you choose relinked in the normal way, the problem is that you might not have any idea where this file, 000191.ai is on your hard drive. Well, you could use the little search field right inside here. I know there's a ton of people, including myself, who never even realized that this thing was active. So I could type it in right here and find out where it is and then place it right there. Yeah, it, that was just some, putting a random folder on my hard drive and mm -hmm. Anne Marie just found it there. So very, very handy. I love that feature. Okay, well, that is it for episode... 002. <laughs> Be sure to check out the show notes on our blog at indesignsecrets.com. We'd love to hear what you thought of the show. Leave a comment or email us at info at indesignsecrets.com. And thank you very much to Adobe for sponsoring us. And until we meet again, this is Anne-Marie Concepcion and David Blattner for InDesign Secrets. <laughs>